And now I would like to invite our next speaker to the podium. This is Dr. Irina Rogel from the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia. She's a full professor in dairy science and nutrition at the biotechnical faculty at the University of Ljubljana. And she's also the leader of the NutriProtect project. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello to everyone. I will try to convince you about the importance of our microbiome. Nutrition and human microbiome are from the perspective of uh, human uh, health protective or risk factors, probably uh, the most intriguing topics nowadays. It is increasingly obvious uh, that microbiome directly or indirectly influence, affect uh, practically all our organs and also that nutrition can protect against or provoke different disorders or diseases. Therefore, better understanding of the functioning of our microbiome uh, is crucial uh, to improve the human health through diet. Uh, perhaps it may be useful to repeat some meaning of some terms uh, for better understanding. Uh, first, microbiota. Microbiota is community of all bacteria in a given environment, and this is a new term for uh, the, an old one, micro, microflora. Micro, microflora is a misnomer according to scientific opinion because the term flora is correctly used to refer to plants only. Then genome is the full set of genes present in a cell or an organism. Microbiome is the set of all bacterial genomes in given environment. One of the scientific challenges uh, of last two decades is uh, discovering uh, the role of gut microbiota in human health. Also, the importance of human genetic polymorphism is well, is well established. Uh, we usually overlook our second genome, our microbiome. Owing to the new analytical and genetic methods uh, which enable us more uh, better insight in this invisible world, uh, the microbiota is often referred to us as a forgotten organ uh, because of our understanding and appreciation uh, of its contribution to the host physiology, metabolism, and also disease. Human houses, 100 trillions of microorganisms. We must not overlook the fact that the uh, human microbiome is 100 times larger than our genome. The greatest microbiome is located in our intestine, uh, where is settled uh, 10 per 14 microbes, this is a huge number, these microbes weigh around one and a half to two kilograms. Each individual harbors his or her own distinctive pattern of bacterial composition. So we differ from each other uh, in gut microbiota like we differ uh, on our fingerprints. And what are the functional threats of this microbiome? First of all, enhance our digestive efficiency by degrading otherwise indigestible polysaccharides. We don't possess the enzymes uh, necessary for uh, digestion of these polysaccharides. Then, uh, Microbiome takes part in maintenance of struct structural integrity of the gut mucosal barrier because the microbes can provoke the expression of genes uh, which produce, which coded uh, the production uh, of mucin 
or the proteins of tight junction. Then, microbiome presents a fundamental barrier protection against pathogens because bacteria occupy the receptor seeds and also bacteria produce the antimicrobial uh, substances. And last but not least, uh, microbiome contributes to gut immunomodulation. The crosstalk between the microbiota and immune cells uh, uh, is essential for the development, education, and for the functionality of uh, micro, uh, functionality of immune system. Uh, and now, what are the factors affecting the development and changes of gut microbiota through uh, different life stages? Uh, in prenatal period, uh, these are mother's lifestyle, uh, mother's health, and nutrition. And during birth and breastfeeding period, mode of delivery and nutrition. It's breastfeeding, formula feeding, or mixed nutrition. And then after weaning, environment, hygiene, and nutrition. And in adult life, age, lifestyle, health, disease, medicine, and nutrition. As can we see, the diet is drawn like a red thread throughout the uh, all periods. Uh, at the beginning, the microbiota is unstable and less uh, diverse. Then, at two to three years old, Similar, is similar to adults, and then is stable till the adulthood while with aging, stability, and diversity are decreasing. If we summarize, intestinal, in, intestinal microbiome is an essential part of metabolic system. It also affects the development and functioning of the immune system. The digestive tract is an important organ of this system that must maintain tolerance to the microbiota and diet, uh, dietary antigens, and in the same time, maintain responsiveness to pathogenic bacteria. In the case of dys dysbiosis, this, in this system, the results are chronic diseases of gastrointestinal tract, but are also uh, other diseases like diabetes, obesity, and so on. It is very interesting that the changes in dietary habits coincide with the increased incidence of many modern diseases. If so, then we can say that we have changed our microbiome and the dietary modulation can be one way, promising way, uh, to treat such diseases. And for the conclusion may be uh, why our microbiome is so important. Because it helps us in digestion, because it collaborates with immune system, we got, because it protects us against infection, and because it is part of us. Thank you very much. <laughs>